so my goal for today is to have someone in this room buy a plane ticket to China after this presentation and to make Chinese connections a foundational competitive advantage of, uh, of your startup. I think many of you are here to start big companies, not small businesses. And nearly every unicorn today and in the future will flow through China, either by uh, delivering a product for their market and or making Chinese manufacturing a large part of their supply chain mix. So uh, growing up in uh, Beaverton, Oregon, which is a suburb of Portland, I never thought I would be on a stage uh, evangelizing the power of China, but I was blessed with spending my entire career in this incredible country, and in my opinion, it's experienced the greatest economic miracle in human history over the past generation, which is largely due, I think, to a fierce entrepreneurial spirit and a desire to succeed. So my dream since I was a young girl was to work for Beaverton's uh, most famous company, which is Nike. And that led me to study uh, mechanical engineering in college so I could work in product development. And I ended up joining Nike and living throughout Southeast Asia in my 20s, managing shoe factories with 50,000 people on one shift. So several years later, um, I had moved on from Nike and was working for Apple in uh, production of the Apple Watch in China, and I was engaged to be married and was really frustrated with the prices and selection of uh, wedding dress boutiques in the US. And I learned that the city that makes 80% of the world's wedding dresses was actually really close by. So I visited, checked out some factories, um, and learned I could form direct partnerships with um, the, the factories to be able to sell top quality wedding dresses for 70% less than stores. And within a day, I started making my dress. And within uh, a month, I was contacted by dozens and dozens of uh, friends of friends who heard about the idea and asked me to make them a dress too. And a year and a half later, fast forward to today, uh, we have 30 employees um, across three countries and are the fastest growing wedding dress company in the US. Um, and I truly believe that these factory uh, relationships and our operational processes are competitive advantages that make our company valuable, uh, will help us scale to hundreds of thousands of dresses, and will protect us from inevitable competition. Um, all the time people tell me something like, well, only someone with your ops background uh, could have done something like this. but. Uh, as much as I'd like to agree with this. Um, my secret to you guys is um, it, my experience gave me the confidence and an initial roadmap to do it, but anyone with hustle can cheaply and quickly set up a Chinese supply chain that adds uh, defensibility to your business. So I want to start uh, with a couple stats. So. First, 80% of the 50 most valuable private companies in the world are based in the US or China. All other countries make up only 20%. Um, in the US, VC money is extremely biased uh, towards SF, New York, and Boston, and a similar trend holds in major Chinese cities. And while there is a big bias to where VC-funded startups are located, there's also a huge bias towards international founders. Over 50% of US-based unicorns have an international founder, and there are more US-based unicorns run by Canadian founders than there are unicorns in Can Canada, and the same goes for India. And I think part of the reason is that even though investors are biased towards funding companies in their own backyard, they also realize the largest startup companies must have an international strategy <clears throat> in terms of their customer base um, and their supply chain, which international founders clearly, cl clearly have more of an appreciation for. So this is why the mission of Founders Embassy to bring international founders to Silicon Valley is super important and timely. And as international founders, you guys have an advantage. I personally have been shocked by how few tech bros uh, think internationally. Um, so I'm going to focus the rest, on the rest of the talk on startups that want to scale physical product ideas. Um, there is a 
multi-trillion dollar opportunity in rethinking the way the world's goods are created and distributed. And forming relationships in China is key to this. So why China? Um, one, it is the only place that can make millions of a product. Um, I am all for US manufacturing, but we can't make 100 million iPhones a quarter here. Uh, an Apple factory has an eighth of the population of San Francisco working on one shift. Uh, the scale of what is happening out there is hard to comprehend. And if you're trying to go big, you need to be thinking about China. Two, the infrastructure is set up. Um, if you can think of something, they are already, already making it. Um, the majority of the world's goods are made in Southeast Asia. And it's surprising to many people how turnkey the systems are. Uh, it's cheaper for Anomaly to ship a box in three days from Suzhou to San Francisco than it is to ship that same box from San Francisco to New York via the US Postal Service. Vendors in China are incredibly sophisticated and used to working with people in the US. Three, form connections to eventually sell in the Chinese market, even if you aren't doing so to start. The Chinese market is the fastest growing and most important market in the world. So every large scale business eventually needs a strategy to serve the Chinese market. And even if you aren't selling in China right away, forming connections through people in your supply chain will be helpful down the line. For uh, tech forward, tech innovation and experimentation is on steroids in China. Uh, mobile adoption is through the roof and factories are eager to adopt new technologies. Um, and the people, there is, there's a sense of ascendancy in China. Um, the optimism and work ethic of the people that I've encountered there from factory workers to factory owners is infectious. Um, legendary investor Mike Moritz recently said that Silicon Valley could do well by studying the entrepreneurship culture in China, and I have to agree. And then doing something hard builds defensibility. Uh, there is a misconception that starting a Chinese supply chain is insurmountable for a bootstrap startup. And it is hard, but definitely doable. Uh, and doing this early gives your young startup a defensible advantage to talk about during VC meetings. Uh, notice one thing I didn't mention is the cost. Uh, I think setting up your operations does, in China does uh, result in lower costs over time, which is important to delivering value to your customer. But leaving costs out of the equation, there are already many reasons to create your product in China versus other countries. So how to start. Uh, one, and this is what I would recommend to anyone, find a market with frustrated or at least apathetic customers and ideally high existing margins. There are so many pain points uh, yet to be solved. Um, often the solution has already been created but hasn't been packaged in the right way. So for example, the idea for Warby Parker came during the founder's business school trip to China when they saw eyeglass prescriptions being made on the street for 20 bucks. The idea for Casper came when the founders was at Costco and saw uh, boxed mattresses. I personally was surprised when there wasn't a better solution for wedding dresses when uh, all of my friends and myself were frustrated with the existing options. The light bulb for Anomaly really went off when I saw a dress that would uh, cost thousands in the US, um, cost only a few hundred uh, in China, to make in China. Next, leanly test whether your friends will buy the product. Uh, the Warby guys have raised $300 million, but they started by buying some glasses from China for a couple hundred bucks and seeing if their business school friends were interested in buying them. If your friends aren't going to pay money <clears throat> for your idea, then you are going to have a hard time convincing strangers to. Uh, if your friends are paying money and telling their friends uh, to buy your product, then you have the seeds of virality. Early traction also is the great equalizer. A VC will give money to a hungry college dropout who has a compelling idea and bootstrap traction versus a Harvard educated person with low traction every time. Uh, next, whoops. Next, uh, create a five slide pitch no longer on why there's an opportunity in this market and why you can see things differently. 
Uh, you should demonstrate traction early and leanly, but you also need a cohesive theory on why your idea can take over the market. From the early days at Anomaly, we had a conviction that taking over capacity at factories would increasingly allow us to lower our costs and deliver more customization versus the brick and mortar stores, which makes up 95% of the market. Uh, next, research vendors and your own connections in China. Uh, LinkedIn mutual connections, Alibaba, Google. Download WeChat and uh, communicate via WeChat. Um, this, this, I think, is the key point. There, is no secret sauce uh, for sourcing vendors. This is a roll up your sleeve kind of job. Uh, nearly every factory in the world is listed on Alibaba and billion dollar companies use it to search for factories and vendors. Uh, for almost any idea that you can come up with, there are factories in China making it. Run by savvy entrepreneurs. Uh, I have found factory owners in China to be visionary. They understand the dynamics uh, of their market better than anyone and are eager to partner with smart startup founders who have a compelling vision. Uh, one of my most successful strategies I used is just searching LinkedIn for any connections of my connections who lived in the region where wedding dresses are made. Uh, you might not know people who live in China, but your friends do, and those are powerful connections. Uh, which brings me to my next point, is determine the region where your product is made and schedule a two-week visit. Front load the meetings at the beginning of the trip because these will lead to other meetings. Um, all of the factories we uh, used came not from the initial meetings we scheduled, but from referrals that came out of those first meetings. Uh, also, I'd recommend that you create business cards and print them and bring them along and create a Squarespace website, which is super important to credibility and legitimacy and show that you um, understand Chinese business etiquette. Uh, next, go to China. I honestly think this is the biggest secret. People are just afraid to get on a plane and go figure it out. Uh, direct flights from SFO to Shanghai are $250. The flight's a little over 10 hours. There are good hotel rooms that are available for 40 bucks. Get out there and hustle. Uh, meet with vendors and pitch your vision. And then use common sense. You really don't have to have my ops background to evaluate a factory. One of the first factories that uh, we visited on the first week in Suzhou, this is a wedding dress factory, mind you, um, everyone was smoking cigarettes. That was an easy pass, that was an easy no. Um, is their factory clean? Does the person seem trustworthy? Uh, what is their story? Are they motivated and do they understand your long-term vision or do they wanna make a quick buck? And then lastly, spend every waking second on developing your product and talking to customers, not making a business plan. Uh, limit your networking events and meetups. Once you have an idea, ruthlessly cut out most parts of your schedule that don't involve your products or customers. So I wanna go over a couple misconceptions. Um, an important point it, to make is that a lot of experts are going to tell you all the reasons why you can't build relationships and create products in China as a young company. Please remember this fact. There is not one successful company that these experts didn't criticize or dismiss for various reasons. Uh, if there's one principle about entrepreneurship I think is more important than any other, you need to find an idea that you have conviction in and aggressively shape your own reality. Uh, if you attempt to build an international supply chain, you'll no doubt hear these concerns, and I think they're all BS. Uh, one is language barrier. Many factories have a point of contact who speaks English. There are also many websites where you can hire a freelance uh, translator. WeChat also has a great translate tool. Too difficult to get to. Again, it's a single flight uh, to Shanghai or Guangzhou, Shenzhen area. And if you hit the pavement, opportunities are going to present themselves. Regulatory issues and tariffs, uh, the infrastructure is set up. You are not the first company to import stuff from China. Um, cultural differences, again, I've been incredibly inspired and impressed with the people that I've come across and you're both motivated by creating a successful business which is mutually beneficial. Five, uh, minimum order quantities, high uh, startup costs. Again, flights to China are less than a trip to New York and factories are eager to meet with you. Everything is a negotiation. 
Um, and last, they're going to steal our technology. This might be true, um, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, particularly with consumer brands, the Chinese vendors cannot build the technical and customer support apparatus that's needed um, to have a successful company. So uh, going back to my Nike days, my key point here is to just do it. I would highly suggest everyone here read Shoe Dog, which is the memoir of Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. Um, and the story of Nike started when Phil was inspired by the quality and price of Japanese running shoes. And he got on a Japan, got on a plane to Japan to make connections with factories and figure out how to import them. And this is despite not having the internet, not knowing Japanese, not knowing anyone, and basically being told by his dad and many other experts that he was unqualified to do this. Um, the story of many great companies started when a person had an idea to create or sell an existing product in a better way and got on a plane to make it happen. So if anyone in this room is thinking about launching a physical product company, I hope I've played a small part in helping you think a little bigger. And if you're thinking big, I think you need to make China a core part of your company's DNA. Thanks so much.